Welcome to Don't Get Your Hopes Up, it's a podcast about stuff, 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 and then stuff. (laughs) (laughs) My name is Josh Challen, aka Lore, and I'm a guy that does this podcast with Mr. Mike B, aka Phony, and he does other stuff too sometimes. But um, bum bum bum. Just add a little auto tune in the post. It'd be good, man. This is a jam yeah. right here. Number one. Yeah. Uh, so, how have you been? Not dead. Yeah. Well, that's that's always a positive. I, th- um, I think so. Yeah. You have been uh, you've been traveling. Yes. You went overseas. I went to the Englands. Uh huh. And how was uh, how's the freedom over there? There's there's significantly less freedom. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I didn't see a single bald eagle anywhere. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you like hug one when you came home, like a long, warm, maybe maybe a little too long, awkward hug. Yeah, and then it bit my face off. Oh, that's not. <laughs> so where did you go? No, that no, was good. Yeah, uh, I went to. Uh, it was actually I spent most of my time. Uh, a little bit north of London, um, went to uh, went to a castle that's up there, Warwick Castle. Went to that, poked oh, around. Oh yeah, like the Warwick. Well, yeah, but it's pronounced Warwick, as I've been told multiple times. You've been corrected probably you, several yeah. times. Yeah, you should have been like, oh yeah, after the actor. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. They have this whole castle named after that League of Legends character. <laughs> uh. So but yeah, when, you were there for how long now? The like, castle uh, about two and a half weeks. Okay, dang, that's a long time. Yeah, like Great. a holiday, like Christmas slash New Year's slash just general vacation yeah. sort of thing, which is cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. we went to Warwick Castle. We went over to Stratford upon Avon and looked at some stuff that Shakespeare might have looked at at some point in his life, <laughs> which was interesting. It was so it was really funny actually. Like yeah. we went to this like. Um, Shakespeare's birthplace like museum which is apparently the actual house that Shakespeare was born in and spent like the first 10 years of his life or something in which is you know okay cool but like they had all these like displays sitting around they're like this is a bit of a quill pen and it wasn't like this is a bit of a quill pen that Shakespeare used or this is a bit of a quill pen that was used by someone who knew Shakespeare or anything. It was literally just, here's a bit of a quill pen. <laughs> like, wow. It was, it was really, really funny. Mm-hmm. Um, we poked at that, went to, went to Nando's like three times because Nando's is amazing. Mm-hmm. Brought back like two gallons worth of Nando's sauce because that's important. Wow. And imported. Yeah. yeah. How'd you get it past the <laughs> custody? <laughs> we were just under the uh, the amount in which you have to declare it. Wow. Yeah, we checked. <laughs> <laughs> just enough sauce. Mm-hmm. Huh. Also, like you can actually order it on Amazon, but that's not the same. We discovered we we were like look, looking at it, and we discovered that it's cheaper to buy it in the UK if you're already in the UK and planning to travel back. <laughs> not not worth traveling to the UK to get the sauce yeah. and then travel back. That's a that's a bit more expensive, but yeah, no, it was good. It was super relaxing, just kind of hanging out for a couple of weeks, spending time in the Englands. In the saw English. some Morris dancers, which was fairly entertaining. Did you um like how was the food? Uh, well, the Nando's was really, really good. Right, the Nando's, but I mean, like, maybe yeah. a specific dish or something. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm sure you going over Na- there... Nando's you're... kind of is a dish. Like, you go there, and they have several options, but all of them are chicken with peri-peri sauce and some <laughs> fries. Right. And that's what you eat, and it's amazing. Uh, we had a whole bunch of Indian food, because Indian food in the UK is just a million times better than Indian food, at least in my area of the United States. Yeah. Uh, because they actually make it spicy <laughs> instead of like, oh, you're poor, poor white boy American. You oh, can't man. possibly handle some spicy food. Next time you're up here in San Francisco, man. <laughs> Let me tell uh, you, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's better anyway. What I don't know what it is about, uh, like Orange County in particular, Orange County and LA County. It's like, 
Actually, think about it. It's not even LA. It's just Orange County. Everyone here is afraid of spicy food. You go to a Mexican place, and it's the blandest, most boring food you can have. Ever. Really? Even at like a like at a something something taqueria. Yeah, like uh, we found one place which is just called Las Fajitas. <laughs> Which oh is god! Like, wow, like not even trying. <laughs> yeah, but like that's why we like we looked at it. And we said, okay, these guys have obviously just sat down and said, let's make a place that sells fajitas. And we were like, okay, this has got to be moderately authentic. And we went there, and it's actually pretty good. It's still not super spicy, but they have some salsas that you can put on stuff that makes it spicy. Yeah, but like the the Mexican restaurant that everybody sort of raves about in the area is actually a chain called El Cholo. And it's just not good. Ooh. Everyone's like, oh, El Cholo, it's so amazing. Oh, I love El Cholo. And you go there and it's like refried beans and cheese. So they That's knew what, it. what they needed. <laughs> they, they, yeah. they knew like pretty much <laughs> what they needed, but yeah. Yeah. We found some tortillas, some refried beans, some cheese, and some rice. This is Mexican food, right? We just we heated it up and put it on a plate. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure that that's, that's that's the most interesting thing for me. It's like like there's like two things. Obviously, the food is like a huge thing, right? Like wherever you go, try something, some, the local cuisine, like you know whatever there's there. Like yeah. when we went to uh, uh, Boston. Lindsay and I went to Boston for uh, PAX East, uh, and we went to this. Uh, what was it? There was some some bar. Uh, it was like oh god, what was it? I can't remember the name of the stupid bar, and it was named after like a famous guy that i can't remember uh, paul revere no it wasn't but let's pretend it's paul revere okay paul um, revere's bar and and like inside they had like the paul revere sub or something and then across the way i was like this is what paul revere is like buried or something and it was like right across the street and it was like you know this is the best right here yeah so it, but it was like it was like a local cuisine place you know like bar uh, right and it just had such like a boston feel to it it was like old and shit and for us you know on the west coast and you probably realize it's now coming from Michigan. Michigan's got older shit than you see out here, I'm sure. Um, like, the everything is old. I'd imagine going, and that's, like, the second thing that I really like about uh, traveling uh, yeah. abroad is you get to see actual old shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like that You're, castle, for example, you were talking about. Yeah, the castle was built in, like... 1100 or something like that yeah like what does that year even mean <laughs> yeah here on the west coast we're like man these buildings they're so old they were built in 1973 <laughs> yes it's, so it's been true. standing for nearly three months yeah and when we say they don't build them like they used to we're talking about like you know from TPs. like the 70s and 60s or something <laughs> like that you know yeah Overseas, it's like, you know, it's like, oh, they're building like used to. It's like, oh, you mean like fucking Stonehenge or something? Like, yeah. yeah, those things are still standing a billion years. Sure. Yeah, made out of solid stone bricks. <laughs> yeah, that's, that is, I, I mean, some of the, the, you know, the greatest marvels of the world. You know, just basically seeing the architecture and stuff and how that stuff is still standing and just how they built that stuff is just pretty, uh, yeah. it's definitely interesting. Yeah, it was really cool. The, the castle that we went to was actually like super interesting. Um, it helped that it was one of the few castles that A, was open that time of year, and B, you could just kind of wander around in. Like, most of the castle is open and accessible in some way or another. Mm. Um, but it was, it was really funny because there's this, like, long, ridiculous story about this castle where, uh, like, originally it was, like, the, the Earl of Warwick had the place, and... It got like half destroyed a whole bunch of times and it was like just this one tower for a long time. And then eventually this other family got control of it somehow or another. Um, it was one tower, I imagine it's not difficult to take. Yeah. Well, it, like it was it was like given to them for some means. It was one of those weird like this person married that person. I was just going to say it's some Game of Thrones and, thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was some, some, some Game of Thrones nonsense. It ended up in this one family and they were like, all right, we have this castle. And by that point, it was more than just the one tower. It was a whole bunch of stuff, mm -hmm. like an actual proper castle at that point. They were like, we have this castle, but we don't really want a castle. We want to have a stately home instead. So they just built one on top of the castle. <laughs> 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 so like, it's, it's really funny. Like you're walking around in this sort of like stately home looking thing. So from like the 1700s, 1800s, all it all looks like 
what you would expect something like that to look like with the paintings on the walls and the big rooms and the big long hallway and everything. Yeah. And you go downstairs and it's like a wood and everything. Yeah. Yeah. And then you, you go downstairs and it's a fucking castle. <laughs> <laughs> it's an actual dungeon <laughs> yeah. in the basement. <laughs> yeah. It, it was really funny. Mm. Um, the, the, the the sort of like terrible slash funny thing about it too is like we're walking around and we see all these signs that are like, yeah, check out the boathouse. There's this really old boathouse. You could totally check out this boathouse that was here and that like the queen had a boat in and stuff. It's a really awesome boathouse. And we're like looking on the, uh, on the like map and everything. And there's like this picture of this little boathouse and stuff. And then we go to where it actually is. And there's just this like burned down husk. And we're yeah. like, okay. <laughs> so this this has to this is like a 1200 boathouse this has to have burned down recently because all of the literature everywhere is still pointing to this boathouse and we went and looked it up um and it had burned down in uh, i want to say it was like august maybe april one of those months that starts with an a uh some sometime earlier in 2015 and it had burned down because they had a trebuchet <gasps> And they were like, they had this like trebuchet display that they do. And they were like, yeah, we'll light this thing on fire. We'll launch it with the trebuchet. And it landed not on the boathouse, but close to the boathouse and burned the thing down. And that's the thing that you got to think like that trebuchet operator had to feel pretty (laughs) shitty about that. Like you just burned down a 800 year old boathouse but I mean, if you're gonna burn down an 800 year old boathouse at least it's not like you know oh someone took a cigarette break <laughs> at least you did there. it with a fucking trip yeah exactly <laughs> it's like at least you kept it in canon kind of yeah <laughs> that's pretty great wow yeah cool I can just so- imagine some historian like another 500 years from now reading about Warwick Castle and how there used to be this boathouse. And he's like, and then in the year 2015, it was burned down by a trebuchet. And he's like, this can't be right. This, this can't possibly be how right. How long did this war rage on for? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. So you didn't but really yeah. miss much. Uh, yeah, I seem to have not. Yeah. yeah. I mean, most everything. It was pretty calm like over the over the entire um, you know holiday season. Uh, like on, pretty much on all fronts. I mean, there's a couple of little things up sprouted up here and there, but that most of that's kind of old news by now. But um, most everything has happened obviously after the first. That's when basically shit starts hitting the fan. People realize they don't have money, and then you know things are happening. Uh, or people you know been waiting to announce that they have spent this money on something. Um, or they get back from holiday break and go, exactly oh, shit. I should do some work. I should start actually doing work. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, they do that one thing. It's like, oh, this is the quarter one thing I'm supposed to do. I'll get it done on day one and do nothing else for the rest of the quarter. Ha! <laughs> um, so the uh, yeah, the, pretty much like one of the biggest things I think uh, that's come out recently is is pretty much the, uh, I guess introducing the new ESPN of esports, um, which everybody was, uh, you know, everyone's always trying to be the ESPN of esports, but yeah. never, never really thought that it would be. ESPN. <laughs> I just, it wasn't. It wouldn't be something. It's like if you ask me who's gonna be the ESPN of esports, I'd been like, I don't know, like MLG TV or you know, yeah, yeah, ESL or something. Like, it was somebody else, right? Anybody yeah. else, as a matter of fact, but not ESPN. It just wouldn't cross my mind. Yeah, uh, but they have a full blown uh, esports category. Yeah, and it's not even like in a sub sub directory, right? It's like ESPN.go.com, right? That's theirs. Uh, slash esports. Yeah. That's pretty That's pretty damn impressive. Yeah, and it's literally like you go to their site and it's ESPN and then in the navigation bar at the top. I'm actually going to check and see if this is the case in just their regular ESPN.go.com. <laughs> just, just to be sure. The, uh, no, the, it's the not. Caps? There's a little. Yeah, there's like these tabs at the top. And if you're in the esports section, it shows esports, but it goes like <laughs> NFL, NBA, MLB, yep. NCAAF, soccer, because they didn't have a good acronym for that one, I guess. And then esports. <laughs> but and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. They've got that up there. But I, just, as I was saying that sentence, I thought to myself, I wonder if that's just because I'm in that section. Yes. 
and you go there. But there is a little drop down that has esports right next to NASCAR. Yeah, and it's at the top. It's above NASCAR. It's above NASCAR it's above because NASCAR. it's more interesting. Yep. Ouch. What the hell? An ice just pops or something in my drink and it's got. But my I drink just spat at me. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. Uh, so, it, they're going to do esports coverage, which yeah. is great. This is like the first step. Uh, they have League, Dota, and Hearthstone. Obviously, everyone's pushing for Hots to be up there too. Uh, I thought it was funny that actually Hots uh, wasn't up there because they just had the collegiate uh, tournament uh, yeah. that was actually on TV and on ESPN two or three or something. Um, I figured yeah, that I would think, be something that'd be up there. Yeah, I think if you're if, like if you're gonna launch uh, an esports site right now, you're gonna you're gonna stick with the ones that are like s- solid and have a history to them and have clearly proven themselves. Oh yeah, 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 and that are released, I guess. Yeah, like Heroes of the Storm is still sort of building as an esport. Yeah, um, and it, League of Legends, Dota have both proven themselves time and again that they are a solid esport i'm kind of surprised honestly that starcraft isn't up there uh but hearthstone i guess has kind of overtaken starcraft at this point in terms of overall esportsiness i mean blizzard can't have everything <laughs> you blizzard, say that yeah, no. <laughs> yeah i mean blizzard blizzard i actually thought that blizzard was gonna become the esports of or the espn of esports when um uh, active blizz picked up uh mlg yeah. So, uh, but apparently they they got beaten to the punch by ESPN themselves. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I actually have zero knowledge of anything that's going on with the Activision MLG thing. I am also extremely curious about what's going to end up happening with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It was like an email leak and all this other stuff. But uh, but anyways, so on the ESPN site, it's like it's interesting to see that they can't they can't make up their mind on exactly how to like actually properly capitalize uh, esports. Yeah. Uh, and so, like for Esports. example, uh, in, in the in the menu bar, it's all lowercase, right? Uh, in the if you look at your Chrome tab at the top, it's a capital S. Yeah. Uh, if you look at any one of the articles, it's capital E. Uh, I'm surprised there's actually not an E hyphen uh, <laughs> <sports> <laughs> anywhere out here. <laughs> yeah, uh, we had a we actually had a discussion internally at Blizzard about that recently, and it was determined that esports should be spelled the and capitalized the same way that you would do email. So, it's just a noun, and <laughs> that, that makes it so much more confusing, though, because I, e- email has a hyphen. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. What is this? Nineteen eighty-seven. No, email, email does properly, not have a hyphen. Pro- properly, well, okay, maybe a long time ago it does, but. <laughs> it did at one point. It sure. It, it was also called electronic mail at one point. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the heady days of America Online and CompuServe, we had this crazy network of machines that were interconnected. Yeah. Call it uh, an intercomputer system, if you will. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 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 Fine. 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 Back uh, in the days when one cared about one's baud rate, it was referred to oh, as <laughs> baud. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But it's, uh, I mean, it's been a lot of big steps, you know. Um, yeah. You know, Mark Cuban, it's funny, we were watching Shark Tank, uh, and we had never watched this show, and I feel like I should watch more of it, because it's actually pretty good. Um, and it just happened to come on after, like, one of our Hulu shows or something like that, and uh, I was like, oh, hey, that's that guy that bought up... Uh, he, that, my wife knows he was like, oh, yeah, it's Mark Cuban. He's this guy, whatever. I was like, yeah, he actually just bought, like, an esports team. And she's like, what? I was like, yeah. Like, a whole a whole fucking team. Um, and then, like, yeah, that instance where he uh, it was, like, a charity tournament or something like that. And he was, like, dropping F-bombs because he could pay for it. You know, he could pay the fine. So he was like, yeah, it's for charity, whatever. Fuck you. Yeah. But, um, but anyways, um, this whole thing is great because... You know, it's the beginning of the year, and there's plenty of tournaments coming up this year for, you know, League, Dota, and uh, Hearthstone, uh, and anything else they add. And by the end of the year, at Christmas, when we go to our Christmas gathering at my uh, father-in-law's house, my brother-in-law, who likes to watch his football, followed by whatever other fucking sports things, because he's he's an all-sports guy, um, 
maybe I'll get the main TV and I'll be able mm. to watch like an esports, you know, holiday event, which we should fucking yeah. do because every other sport does it. There's always a Labor Day game. There's always a Christmas game. There's always like every holiday has a game for that day. Yeah, and we need to do some of that. I, I kind of have I have mixed feelings about this. Mm. On on the one hand, I totally I, yeah, hundred percent see that perspective. Like the turning uh, uh, turning esport into something that you do at a family gathering, and the the best way to do turn that into a pastime. Yeah, turn it into a pastime. The best way to do that is I had the day off of work, and it's a celebration sort of day, and so we're gonna switch on some League of Legends or whatever. Yeah, like that. We're we're gonna watch the the I don't know fucking CLG versus TSM match or something. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's gonna be awesome. On the other hand, I work a lot of World of Warcraft and sports <laughs> stuff, and I enjoy I don't care having about holidays. Your feelings, bro. <laughs> I don't care. That's just. I mean, you know, you're probably salaries. So it doesn't matter. But I mean, you know, if you weren't salary, you'd get more money. But yeah, I, I understand. I understand your plight. I just, I just don't care. Because maybe I would maybe like to stand around maybe with drinks. Maybe if they were like, okay, we're gonna barbecue. start doing this, so we're gonna give you a big raise. Like, I, maybe then I'd be okay with it. There you but go. I, yeah, I, just I like I be, like having holidays. <laughs> I just think it'd but, be great yeah. to be able to barbecue right with the sliding glass window yeah. open, so I could see the you know see the TV and have it up full blast and just like yeah, and you're watching some that. fucking Hearthstone or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I I no, I totally agree. I think that'd be really really cool. I would. I would like that to be something that some organization does. I did that for Survivor Games. Uh, I actually had a barbecue and everything. Nice. Uh, not like a bunch of people. It was just like me and my wife and my kid and everything. But still, <laughs> like I had that experience of like Survivor Games were gone. And, uh, you know, I was barbecuing and I had, you know, some beers, which I don't drink beer. But, you know, I felt like, yeah, you know, watch some sports. I'm going to fucking drink some beer, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it was great. Yeah, I'll have to, I might actually see about... Organ- like, that's actually making me think now. I might see about organizing something like that for like a GCD tournament or something at some point. There you go. Could be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> work them. Work them holidays, Lord. Do that. Yeah. One other thing that I want to point out about uh, ESPN's esports thing is that they have Slasher on staff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which yeah. I I just find his general path through esports to be very interesting because. He just seems to turn up kind of everywhere, which is, and he, he's always like in some sort of serious position, like as a, uh, excuse me, esports analyst or something. Right. The other reason that I find it very interesting is because I randomly got a Facebook friend invite from him the other day. <laughs> and I looked at it and I was like, okay. I generally have this policy on Facebook that if I have not had an actual face-to-face conversation with somebody, I don't friend them on Facebook. Right. What's because, the point? yeah, because, it, like, Facebook for me is, like, I have Twitter for the talking to everybody sort of thing. Facebook for me is, this is where I keep track of the people that I actually know IRL to some degree. There, there are a few people that I have on there that I only know uh, through the internet, but I know them very well through the internet. Totally. Um... And then I get this random friend invite from Slasher, and I'm like, okay, on the one hand, that's kind of cool. Like, I feel, I feel like, relevant somehow that Slasher wants to friend me on Facebook. But then I also know that he's a journalist, <laughs> and uh, I, don't, yeah, that's true. I don't know that I want him looking at what, like, the random garbage I put on my Facebook is. Uh. Yeah, think it back to the fuck that guy incident on Facebook. Yeah, it's like, like st- stuff like that. It's like, ah, yeah, like I don't, sense. I don't post anything even remotely like that on oh, Facebook yeah, no, anyway. Yeah. But yeah, you never know. <laughs> you never like I don't. I keep finding things like in the the Facebook memories thing that pop up. They're like, "Hey, remember when this happened six years ago?" And I'm like, "Oh like, shit!" Here's, here's a picture of you pissing in the corner of a parking lot, parking yeah. garage. Hey. I didn't think anybody saw that picture. You want to share that with everybody? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to show this time? to your mother? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, ESPN actually going hard on esports is Good. pretty cool. Mm-hmm. It's It's been a long time coming. 
And it, it kind of remains to be seen how long it lasts. But my hope is that ESPN will... Uh, like, I don't think that ESPN would go into this industry if they weren't 100% positive that it was a good move. So I, I feel like they they've they've done all sorts of research. They they know what's going on with esports. They understand that yes, okay, actually this is sort of the wave of the future for a lot of people. And maybe maybe esports number like we we've seen a lot of numbers thrown around uh, from time to time. It's like oh yeah, this League of Legends tournament had more viewers than the Super Bowl or something yeah, like that. Right, it's yeah. like I always look at that and go okay, <clears throat> how are you comparing these metrics? What are you actually looking at here is this like unique hits for the league of legends tournament versus tickets sold for the super bowl <laughs> like how is this actually comparing here it's 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 not going to take much to trump uh super bowl and I, and I don't mean like maybe right now but like next year or something like that maybe the year after that uh yeah. because because you know these games are worldwide you know yeah, so true. so yeah. the the United States National Football League. <laughs> yeah, it's probably not. Even if it really tried, probably won't uh, deliver uh, versus another team. Especially if it's like two teams that nobody gives a shit about, or like one team is clearly gonna fucking win. Yeah, uh, and no one's gonna watch. So, yeah, it's. I, I see that definitely being a thing that maybe gets trumped soon. And yeah, it goes with all like just you know, uh, US based sports or maybe sports that are, you know, pretty much popular here or like baseball here in like Japan. Um Yeah. But like soccer, that's that's the one to shoot for. Like when you could yeah, beat the, the World, World Cup. Cup. Yeah. <laughs> Which I don't I mean, I don't think that'll happen in our lifetime, but uh or we'll be too old to give a shit. Yeah. But uh but yeah there will be some other new thing by the time that that, that happens. But Yeah, and we'll be griping about it too. Yeah. But when I mean e- if, when ESPN is for actual games and that's it. Yeah. And this other thing comes up, we'll be like, what is this crap? Yeah. Yeah. At the same time, though, there's so much discussion going on about how the the millennials tend to... Uh, yeah, that's how you have to say that, by the way. Millennials. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Smug. Yeah. They uh, tend to prefer watching stuff on YouTube to watching stuff on TV. Yeah. Uh, half the time, they don't even have TV. They're not as interested in sports, generally speaking. Uh, as previous generations there's still obviously a strong interest there but not as heavily focused on sports as previously so i would not be surprised at all if in the next you know 15 20 years or so we start to see electronic gaming and competitive gaming start to overtake at least some of the most popular like tennis or something yeah 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 like tennis uh probably nhl actually um I mean, oh God, yeah, it, it's it's it'll be interesting. It will see uh, where it goes. But how many people do we have watching? I actually had that number uh, up here that I deleted it, so that's pretty smart. Um, like viewers that we had last year in just esports in general, some big fat stupid number. Anyway, speaking of, so speaking of people working together, is it in a team? What? To accomplish a goal in a competitive arena. What? I'm I actually don't I'm don't on, know where you're going with this. Twitch plays claw machine. <laughs> 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 I didn't know about this until I saw this link in this document. It's because there was only like a hundred people watching and I was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> it was so uh, I, I do I do have to say that I went and I looked at it and I was like oh this is interesting it says the next uh, the next broadcast will be whenever and I was like oh, I'll watch a little bit of the VOD and when I when you load up a VOD and rechat pops up and says the next recorded message will appear in forty five minutes <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah. you know that this was not a popular stream. it was not a popular stream. It was it was also too easy. What ended up happening was the guy set it up and like, he had all this everything basically we good to go and turns out chat was actually pretty good at working together to grab stuff. <laughs> they were actually coordinating pretty well. <laughs> it was just a claw machine. Like you know, you go to you put a quarter in and you're or a dollar or twelve dollars, how much it is, and then you move the claw and then you push the button and it lowers the crane, it picks it up and it drops in the hole, but every time it picks it up it always drops it. That's exactly what it was. And it was just too easy. And chat was basically just dunking all over the place with it. So uh but 
the piece of news related to that is they actually uh, they actually opened up a uh, Twitch plays category. Oh, that's on, cool on Twitch because there's so many of them, and they are fun to watch. And it's kind of like it's kind of like their interactive sec- section. You know, it's like, do you want to? It's like, do you want to? Do you want to watch content? Sure. Okay. Do you want to like interact with the content? Sure. Okay. Yeah. So here's the Twitch plays category. You can go play games with friends, but not exactly how you would kind of expect. Um, but yeah, that was. I just wanted to kind of. I wanted to try to transition to that and kind of freak out a little bit. But. But speaking of uh, you know esports and stuff like that. Speaking of people jumping on bandwagons. <laughs> so. E- e- ESPN getting all behind esports. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. Uh, not too long ago, YouTube was all like, yeah, we've got YouTube gaming now. Yep. And that was a thing. <clears throat> hmm Now there's Twitter gaming. Yes. And... <sighs> okay, so. First of all, I have no idea what the purpose of Twitter gaming is. I... It, their description is just the best of games, gaming, gamers, and esports on Twitter, <laughs> which to me means that this is just going to be r slash gaming in 140 characters. Yeah, so far. <laughs> so far, it's r slash gaming in 140 yeah, characters. Pretty much, so far. Well, okay, so so far, it is almost 100% them retweeting various brands. <sighs> yep. Tweeting at that. We did it too. Uh, just being straightforward. Blizzard. Like, not just World of Warcraft, but, like, the even the BlizzCon Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> like, we were like, yeah, Twitter gaming, people are following this, and this makes sense for us to tweet at them and hope that they retweet our thing because people will look at what they're doing right now. <laughs> and something, something. But, like, right now, I'm just looking through their feed. They have, three minutes ago, as of this, they, uh, they retweeted... Um, or they no, they tweeted a congratulations to the clan phase for reading reaching a million followers, which okay, cool, <clears throat> isn't something that interests me. I'm not going to push the follow button just yet. Uh, they have a dot at saying, uh, so someone tweeted at them saying, "What exactly are you, a?" And they replied with a dot at saying, thanks for noticing, Zenpai. We are a Twitter Twitter account tweeting about tweeting about gaming. Happy to clear that up. And that, this, this, this leaves me with more questions than I had when I went in. Mm-hmm. What, what exactly are you doing here? And it seems like what they're doing is A, retweeting various brands tweeting at them. And B, exactly what YouTube gaming did, which yes. made me unfollow them. Yes. It's like, just, it's just. Oh, here's a bunch of random gifts, and then link to like, you know, we have channels, or whatever. But like, yeah, exactly. It's just not. It's just not good content. Yeah. Like everything, everything is an animated gif on there. It's and it's like whenever I see, if I'm scrolling down someone's feed, I see like nothing but animated gifs, and there's no like uniformity there. It's like if somebody, if it's like a game and he's demonstrating art pieces from his game that he's building, great, right? But if it's like if it's like everything is like here, oh here here's Dragon Ball Z gif. Oh here's uh here's an Outlast gif. Here's you know whatever. Like it, it, there's like all these different things. It's like okay, you're just like you're totally. This is, there's nothing conducive here, or, or nothing like ugh, nothing cohesive here. It's just like a yeah. mess, and you're flooding my feed with garbage. Thus far, <laughs> I I I see zero purpose for this. Yeah. Like is... the only interesting thing thing I've seen so far is uh Twitter gaming did a throwback Thursday to great gaming tweets in history and retweeted a uh tweet from someone that purports to be the real Shigeru Miyamoto, but I don't know if I believe that that's the case because looking at this yeah no this is this is definitely a, t- a parody account <clears throat> so they've they've just retweeted a parody account of Sh- Shigeru my Th- this is stupid can i can i just say that this is stupid <laughs> yeah that's good yeah yeah, yeah totally like I mean, i'm <clears throat> i'm obviously as a community manager i'm obviously interested in 
social media, including right. Twitter. Twitter is my yes. my platform of choice. I actually really like Twitter. I'm interested in gaming. I feel like that should be obvious. I am even interested in a official Twitter gaming account. But do something useful with it? I don't know. This is just weird. Yeah. I mean, it hasn't been up for a while, a long time, but still, <clears throat> it's still just... It's here's here's what I want to. If if I was a person behind this this account, right, or basically running this department, or whatever, it's like okay, hey, we want to make a Twitter gaming you know account. Okay, well, what's the purpose? Like, what are we gonna get out of it? You know, it's it's like, are we gonna have original content on there? Because they have the ability to post long videos. They don't have to post thirty second clips or six second clips. So if they want to post like a Twitter gaming content feed. Like, give us something. We haven't seen anything yet. Now, it's only been up for, you know, what, uh, a week now. Yeah, a week today. <clears throat> we haven't really done anything uh, up until, like, yesterday they started actually doing stuff. Uh, but still, it's like the, their only real, like, deep contribution has basically been outside of, like, retweets or soliciting for retweets or, like, soliciting for, you know, tweets so they can retweet uh, has been yeah. their initial let's start there. Uh, let's tweet with the uh, press start. Uh, gif with the um, uh, what's it called? The little alien guy from uh, oh god, I forget what it's called, Arkanoid or something like that. I think it's Arkanoid, <clears throat> but anyways, um, yeah, it, if if this was my call, I'd be like, no, we need to have like a lineup of content and be like, hey, we're Twitter gaming, and boom, like this is here's a, here's a wrap up of hot gaming related shit that happened on Twitter or something. You know, or, or big announcements of things that were announced through Twitter or whatever. And we would give people incentive. We'd reach out to these companies and we'd, we'd talk to them. And we'd say, hey, you know, if, if you want to do uh, a promotion or something like that, like through Twitter, like reach out to us and we'll, we'll, we'll put it in our, you know, whatever collection we put together or whatever it is they do. Something that they provide to people, not just a retweet. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, this is just, it's just weird. Yeah. And like maybe they have some sort of value that I they haven't showed us yet, mm. but I don't see it. So, and I'm I'm being I'm putting my social media user hat on for a second and saying I haven't seen something in the first thirteen seconds of looking at this that makes me interested. So I'm not interested. Goodbye. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's definitely something to keep an eye on, and maybe they come up with a reason for this to exist. But so far, it just seems to be an excuse for a whole lot of brands to make funny gifs about stuff, not yeah. necessarily even games. <laughs> I mean, just I just went through their feed, and really the yeah, outside of retweets or or soliciting for people to give them tweets to retweet. They actually only have that initial tweet, hello, and the second tweet of says, let's tweet. It yeah. should say fucking let's retweet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Accurate. So speaking of Twitter, this actually reminded me of something else that I wanted to talk about that I didn't put in the doc. Uh-oh. But you heard this rumor, right, of Twitter... 10,000 characters? Yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> so I have mixed feelings on this. <clears throat> uh-huh. On the one hand... You could fit your transitions in it. On the one hand, I could fit my transitions in it, yeah. Okay, okay. In the other uh, one hand, though. In, in that same, that very same hand. <laughs> uh, I, there, there are times when I think, like, yeah, a twit longer would be useful for this thing that I want to get across in this one isolated instance. And But it's kind of a pain in the ass to use, and it's not really actually officially Twitter, which makes me feel a little bit weird about using it for some reason. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Yeah. But, yeah, like, there's times when I think to myself, oh, TwitLonger, yeah, I should use that. Like, for example, I have right now on my, on my Twitter account, I have a pinned tweet that just says something about how I don't make development decisions and this is my personal account or something like that. Right. Uh, yeah, this is my personal account and I don't discuss work related topics here and B, I do not make development choices just because people like to tweet at me all the time about how I'm ruining World of Warcraft. You specifically. Yes. Yeah. Which I am, but they're not supposed to know that. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, 
And that's the sort of thing that if I had more space, I could go into a little bit more detail about like, yeah, I'm a community manager. This is what that means. Here is why that means that this doesn't work, blah, blah, blah. And like just, I could actually go into some detail on it and it would be kind of useful. And I thought about like, maybe I'll just use a twit longer for that. But my concern is that a twit longer is a little, like that's a little bit too much of a wall for the average asshat who just wants right. to rage at me about shaman or something. Yeah. Um, it opens a whole new page too on top of everything else. Yeah. Whereas if there was just something directly in Twitter where they could say, okay, here's his info and then just click expand and it actually just drops in right there in the same feed like that. That's a little bit more intuitive. And I, I can see, I can come up with all sorts of situations in which isolated instances of that would be okay. What concerns me is people are not going to be very savvy about this. Like all of the best, like official brands and everything are still going to use Twitter and stay under 140 characters as much as possible because everybody that's trying to like actually having critical thinking about how they're using Twitter and is actually trying to grow their, their grow their brand knows that if you use 140 characters in a tweet, you're already kind of doing it wrong. Like it's, it's much better uh, to, have a link in there, have a picture in there, and if you've got both of those, then that drops you down to only like 90 characters that you can actually use, and the highest engagement rate for a tweet is actually at around 40 characters. Yeah. So the the shorter, like 140 characters is too long most of the time. You actually want to try and keep it shorter, if you if at all even remotely possible, um, and use, use pictures to get the, the point across when you can. Yes. So brands will not use 10,000 characters under any circumstances. Like... I, I could see a sort of like we have a press release to put out sort of thing. Like I could see something like that happening where uh, instead of making a link, we'll just make a read more thing. But it's going to be super, super rare that that sort of thing actually occurs. What worries me is just the the random people that I like. I, I like these people. I want to follow them. Will not recognize that going to 150 characters on their tweet actually makes it a huge pain in the ass to figure out what they're trying to say. Because instead of seeing, I think I'm going to go down to the gym today, you see, well, I've been really thinking about what I might decide to do today, and I'm thinking that, read more. <laughs> and that that's what worries me about the 10,000 character limit. It's not, not, I don't even care, like if someone wants to just take this and go, yes, now every single post is going to be 600 characters or longer, I'll just unfollow that person. I, yeah. I, I do not have time for that. And I'm enough of a dick that I will just unfollow people that are annoying me on Twitter. It's the 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 hundred and forty first character that concerns me. Yeah. When you just barely go over it and you don't realize that you really should keep that under that hundred and forty characters so I can read the whole thing as I'm scrolling through my feed instead of having to tap on your stupid face to to pull out the remaining five <laughs> characters of your tweet. Yeah. I can't wait to do that. <laughs> to like and like underneath the read more, just have like a period. Like has them yeah. expand and just period. Lose like forty followers. Like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so I I I actually think it's fine. Uh because I mean, if I have something to say that I want to say, uh so like I think the person most notorious for using Twit longer all the time is probably Total Biscuit. Yes. Um he and it's funny, like, you know, the guy, obviously, he likes to, he likes to, to, if he has a point that he needs to drill home, he will drill it home. Yeah. Uh, whether he, it's through TwitLonger or through SoundCloud or whatever. And he has opinions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a few. Uh, he is a, he's a man who is possessed of many opinions. <laughs> and so, so, for somebody like him, this is, like, perfect. Uh, yeah. For someone like me, it's like I still think it's perfect because I might use it every once in a while. Like there's there's times like especially like it's funny like the the, the example that I could think of is when I was I was bitching about uh, Canon. Yeah, it was like Canon and uh, Nikon versus Sony and how like Sony is shitting all over Canon and Nikon in the uh, the SLR industry and like the the. Uh, prosumer industry because Canon and Nikon are too afraid to step all over their professional line's toes to actually put anything worthwhile in their DSLRs. Uh, and then Sony's like, well, fuck you, we don't have any, so we're going to put all this really awesome stuff and tech into our 
you know, consumer level uh, cameras. So <clears throat> just what I explained to you right there was like, you know, three, three tweets worth. Right. Yeah. And I want to say I probably had a couple of there and like something like that. Like I would have loved to be able to put that in just one, just put it all in one. That way there's no confusion. If someone's reading my timeline, they're not like going back. It's like, what the hell are you talking about? Like reading, you know, one sentence and then going, reading the previous sentence, you know, in that order because you know, the timeline's backwards. Um, I could see it being handy. Like I, I, I'm, I welcome it. Uh, I like to see it because occasionally I might want to use it. I might want to bitch about something, and I want people to be able to read it all in their timeline without going anywhere. Yeah, for me, it depends a lot on the implementation. Like, I kind of think, <clears throat> like, even just as we've been talking about this, I've been, I've been thinking about, okay, how, how would I use it in certain? Because, like I said, there are definitely situations in which I would use it, but, uh. I hmm. I kind of think the best way for it to go would be to keep the 140 character limit and then allow people to add a second thing that has up to 10,000 characters that you can then expand. So that that way, no matter what, your first bit of your tweet is this self-contained little thing, this little pocket, and there's no like trailing off at the end of sentences or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that that way you can say, okay, I have some shit to say about cameras. And then people can click read more to hear what you have to say about cameras. And if they're just scrolling through, through their feed and they go, I don't give a fuck about cameras, they can Ta-da! just continue scrolling through their yeah! feed. Yeah. <clears> yeah. <throat> totally. But when it's like, if, if the way it's implemented is it's just, well, just type as long as you want in here and we'll just trim it and then click have a read more link, then you end up getting like the first bit of that is, I just wanted to talk a little bit about how Sony read more. <laughs> it's like oh sony what's sony doing yeah. i, I want to hear this interesting thing that mike oh he's just talking about fucking cameras whatever yeah you're gonna have to write you're gonna have to write your first 140 characters as a headline if you know you're gonna go over basically yeah and exactly. there are gonna be people who don't get it and who are going to go over and it's gonna and it's gonna be useless content on the other side like i said yeah. a period right yeah um, whereas if they're if they're forced to say this this 140 characters is 140 characters and that's all you get and you can't you don't just keep typing and it will truncate automatically like this like just put it directly in people's faces like this is what people are going to see and then they will see a link to to read the rest of what you have to say mm-hmm. there will be less of that happening yeah, it's, yeah it'll and, still happen but there will be less of it and the other thing too is uh twitter is notorious for uh pitchfork brigades you know yes. basically moving on people because somebody retweeted something that was out of context yeah, you know, like, I mean, you could you could think of a billion examples where you're like, oh man, I was watching Blazing Saddles the other day, and I told you over the part where, and the next tweet, <laughs> you know, you just quote anything yeah. from Blazing Saddles, right? <laughs> yeah, and, and like, and what happens if that gets a number of retweets? Is someone to be like, oh man, like uh, this guy is whatever, and then like, oh gosh, oh, I'm just gonna blindly. Like tell you you're an ass. I'm gonna go to your house and slit your throat. You know, it's like and this shit happens on the internet. You know, on Twitter, uh, and so it's like you know what? This is a great way to if you have a lengthy thought that you feel like you need to explain uh, through multiple tweets, put it in one tweet. That way you will not be taken out of context because you can't. It's all in one tweet. Yeah, yeah, and it's also like as, as a community manager, I get a ton of. This person has something that they want to say, but it can't fit into 140 characters. So I end up with 15 tweets in a row in my timeline. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, dude, I'm not going to read that. (laughs) It's not not even that there's a lot of words there. It's that it's a pain in the ass to read 15 tweets, especially if they're the sort of person that does. Yeah, it's backwards and they don't know how to (laughs) thread them properly by replying to themselves. So you end up like I can't even expand the last one and read the entire list. I have to actually go through and find each individual tweet. And there there will be somebody else that tweeted me in the midst of that, so now it, it gets all broken up. If that can just be one tweet that says, fuck you, Laura, you stupid asshole, and then it can, I can expand that to find out how they've expanded yeah. on how I'm an asshole. Yeah, they then detail it. Yeah, yeah let's break, let's going break this into sentence detail. down word by word here. Yeah, just <laughs> just list <laughs> off all of my, uh, my misgivings. <laughs> And, uh, and yeah, like that, that's actually super useful from a, like from my job standpoint, Mm -hmm. it's just that concern that all of a sudden everybody is going to just say, Oh, I can just type as much as I want now. And there will just be a link. 
and not recognize that there will just be a link is that you don't it's not just a link okay <laughs> this is like <laughs> this is hard work <laughs> but I yeah. hope they do it I hope they do it soon I'm I'm cautiously optimistic depending on how it's implemented yep. I hope they do it soon so that way I could just I, ca- I can't do the period thing because I think it'd be funny <laughs> um, and it just so I, you know, just so it's there. Like it's just a quality of life thing. It's just there. I may not ever use it. You know? <laughs> when they, uh, assuming that they they go with the you get 140 characters and then another block in implementation that has the read more link. How many people would put their 140 character tweet and then in the second thing just be like, "Made you look." Yeah, everyone's <laughs> gonna do it. Everyone's totally gonna do it. Um. And you know, and and here's the thing that's great with uh, Twitter is that they have their analytics, so you can actually track all that too. So mm. I'll be able to actually track like what the performance of that read more link is. So <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I could I could say, hey, I have I have a key to such and such you know beta or game or whatever, and then underneath read more, I could put the actual key there, and you know just yeah, just to kind of just to just to hide it, you know. Yeah, there's there's a lot of different things you could do. Um, I mean, another great thing too is uh, straight up like NSFW content or something. Like me, I every time I post a link to my photography, I have to be like NSFW, NSFW. By the way, NSFW. You know, yeah. um, you know, I could I could stash the link on the other side of a read more. That way, if somebody you know accidentally goes to the link, I mean, nobody's ever bitched about it, honestly. Uh, but if anybody ever accidentally goes to that link, it's like, well, you fucking had to actually click read more and then click on that link. Yeah, it's like that extra degree. Like the same thing would go for like film spoilers. Like Star Wars just came out recently, and everyone was like, oh, I'm not even gonna look at Twitter yeah, until I've seen it. Exactly. But if spoilers, perfect. If people could be like, obviously, people are always going to be assholes in some capacity, of but. Course. Like, I could have gotten out of the movie and gone, oh, man, I just saw Star Wars The Force Awakened. Here are my thoughts. Read more. And then I could I could put whatever the hell I wanted in there. Like, here are my thoughts, heavy spoilers or something like that. And then there's mm-hmm. read more. And people that don't want spoilers don't click on it. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't have a blog. You know, I would love to if I if I yeah. sometimes I feel like I need to rant about something. I know you do. Sometimes you want to, you know. Yeah. I, I, be I'm known for ranting. Yes. From time to time. I'm and I famous. actually, like ages ago, I actually set up a Tumblr just for that purpose, but I never use it because... Like, because Tumblr, it's another site. Yeah, exactly. Like, I want to stay on Twitter. Mm-hmm. If somehow, like, we could put all of the social media networks into just Twitter, I would, I would do that. <laughs> <laughs> Everything where I'm comfortable, please. Yes, exactly. They need to they need to come up with the uh, some way to do like what Snapchat's doing with like disposable content. Yeah. So I can like so somebody can post like oh here's think like a film company yeah like here's here's a here's a sneak peek at a scene and it's only gonna be live for three minutes. Yeah. And then it'll and then it'll automatically delete itself or something. Like, I mean Twitter sh- has Twitter has Vine they could very easily put that sort of functionality into Vine. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Yep. These temporary. I, I say very things. easily. It could be the most difficult thing possible. That's not how mine <laughs> I know. Developed, but... Some cobbled together software. <laughs> yep. But yeah. So uh, we kind of strayed away from the esports side because I distracted us with 10,000 characters. Yep. But I did want to bring up uh, your Mechanized Brawler. Mechanized Brawler League? Is that yes. what it's called? Mechanized Brawler League. Uh, so I basically, uh, obviously with the help of a lot of, uh, people, um, like viewers and such, uh, we built a, uh, a, a mini game, you know, inside of, a, uh, I guess technically an esport, but not like e- esport fame, um, inside of, uh, inside of space engineers and, I've actually gotten the attention of uh, of the developers, and if I already talked to them, and they think it's the coolest shit ever, and I really nice. can't say anything else just yet. But, <laughs> <laughs> but other uh, other things, I mean, they hit me up for a reason, right? So yeah, uh, you'll probably hear more on that front uh, later, probably next week or so. 
But nice. but yeah, it's you know when we started building it, it was like let's see if we could do this, and we basically laid down like a flat uh, a flat you know floor uh, like armor block floor, and then I, I then I built like a bunch of like. <laughs> ropes and shit like just like it made it look like a wrestling ring almost right With like <laughs> yellow armor blocks so they look like ropes and whatever and uh and we you know people built like a just couple like random you know random little bots they could remote control on the game because you know in the game you have drones right so you know slap a couple grinders on these drones and fucking fight each other you know that, that was the whole point it was just like you know uh, uh um robot wars or uh or whatever like it was it was it was battle bots inside of uh, Space Engineers, and it's very, very fun. Like, what's the beauty of Space Engineers is it's not like some, it's not like when you're playing like an FPS or something like that, or any other game where whenever you get a kill, the guy is like, you know, he dies or something, right? He dies in his corpse. Maybe he ragdolls or something like that, which is, might be kind of amusing and visceral or whatever. But that's kind of the end of it. The beauty of uh, doing this in Space Engineers is if you get a good strike on somebody, uh, you can knock off off like a, a good quarter of their ship, and it just like fucking bump, bump, bump. like the components <laughs> start pouring out. Like one of the best shots we had was actually right at the very beginning uh, of the uh, uh, of testing this stuff out, where a guy had uh, a whole bunch of grinders, and he was like he was shaped like a pillar, right? And uh, uh, and he would have a bunch of grinders facing outward. And in the center was all the vital components. And so he got hit, like, really, really hard and lost the grinders that were protecting his components. And what ended up happening is so, like, he basically gets hit and his, 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 his like, character, it's a ship, like a cylinder, kind of leans back. And then, like, he kind of regains and he comes back. And as he leans back forward, you just see all these little gyros come falling out all over the floor, right? It's like, <laughs> like he's bleeding, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> space engineer's components. And like, and, and the thing is, like that happens at the end of a match. It's like there there are pieces of bots everywhere, but these bots are still able to just barely function because they still have a gyro and a reactor and you know one wheel, and they're still trying to like you know ram the other guy to take him out. And it's just it's just great to see these things fall apart uh, throughout the throughout this match. And then and then that's just the competitors, the engineers themselves, right? Then there is the fifth player, which is the arena. The arenas have gotten just absolutely fucking ridiculous. The the kinds of stuff because you know, space engineers is a you know they they have uh, you know physics they have good physics that could be better with you know improved netcode, um, but there's all these mechanics uh, that you can use uh, like for example like a rotor or a piston or something and you could kind of combine these things to create you know a spinning you know, hydrogen, hydrogen thrust, gigantic hydrogen thruster powered hammer, right? That just spins like a gigantic pendulum almost, but just spins in 360. And, you know, if you get near it, you're going to get launched off of the entire map. Um, there's all kinds of crazy traps that we put in uh, into some of these some of these things. And it's just, it just makes it really, really exciting. Even for, I mean, you, I sent you a video early on. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've, I've watched a couple of them now. I find them actually, like, I, I don't know anything about space engineers other than you get really mad when I am very drunk and start to fly a spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> but, and that I probably shouldn't use whatever tool that was on that other thing that I mm -hmm. kept using that tool on. Um, <laughs> but Those are the days. Those are the days. <laughs> Aside from whatever that was, I don't know like anything about space engineers, but like I was watching this and I was like, I, I can actually follow this pretty well. Like I, I understand like someone built that thing and it's going to attack that thing. And there's these other things around and whichever one of them doesn't get completely annihilated is the winner. <laughs> yeah, I, exactly. I, I've seen robot wars. I know how this goes. Yeah. It was funny. I was actually watching while, while I was in the UK, I was watching uh, a couple episodes of the UK robot wars mm -hmm. and I was like, man, this would be so much better if like, it was in a video game where they could just <laughs> because like you you know you watch the actual robot wars and like sure it's cool they have these like uh, these cool looking robots that fight each other but it's always the 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 fast wedge shaped one that wins yeah right like 100% <laughs> of the time it's the fast wedge shaped one 
that's yeah. that's how you win because that one tips another one over and it can shove them into the the traps and they just win 100 percent of the time mm-hmm. but in a video game where you can have things like i don't know chainsaws sticking out of the side of you or i guess landing gear is very dangerous uh it's <laughs> it actually opens up a lot more possibilities and you can start to see it, it makes it easier to iterate on the rule set too when saying okay we're actually going to increase like in robot wars it's a weight limit like if you were to say okay we're actually going to increase the weight limit by 20 because we feel like that would result in closer and more entertaining matches that doesn't then mean that a bunch of people have to go back and do another six months of work to make their robot into the the yeah new, to fit into the new guidelines <laughs> yeah. you can be like because it's what build count is what you go off of right yeah block count block count yeah uh-huh. so you could say all right everybody gets another 50 blocks and then people can tinker at it for like maybe a week and then they'll probably be Shit. ready to go <laughs> so so this actually happened early on we were at 200 uh and then we we were starting like kind of toying around with a 500 idea and then someone's like well i'll just make it over, like an even 250 and I was like, oh, yeah, 250, 500. That makes way more sense. Mm. Okay, sure. And so we already had a bunch of bots already. And so the taking it from 200 to 500, people were just like, all right. And it took them like an hour. <laughs> you know? Because all they had to do, I mean, that's that's like an hour of like refinement too. You know, All they had to do is basically just like slap on a couple more blast doors and armor blocks, uh, maybe, maybe another piston or another grinder or something. Uh, and that was pretty much it. Um, but we've had a couple tournaments and they've, you know, the... Uh, it's always dependent on depending on how the patch wants to act that week, right? Because they have a patch every week, and occasionally they break our shit. Um, but like, we had two solid weeks of tournaments, and that went really well. Um, and we have like a points based system and everything, and it just it just it was good. It was really, really good. We have a we have a uh, we have a logo. It's kind of like the uh, the MLB or the MLG logo, but it's got a landing gear on it, right? <laughs> um, and what's funny is, you know, when I was talking to the guys at Keen, Keen Software House, uh, yeah, they actually didn't know that we, uh, that the music and the voiceover, right, the custom voiceover and everything, they thought I did that in post for the videos on YouTube because they watch on YouTube oh. live. And I was like, no, dude, like we're using the sound blocks in the game to trigger. <laughs> these sounds and nice. that's it uh nice. it, yeah so it's so they didn't even really think that, that they was like, oh yeah i guess you could totally do that it's like yeah we have like 27 sound blocks on this thing so that way we can have like you know full stereo and all this <laughs> shit like, we go to town and then like uh cal rakin this guy who uh who has, has done a phenomenal amount of work helping us out with this stuff um he's he's like he actually does theater production uh, mm. And so he has like all these spinning spotlights on rotors that are also on rotors. So like they just like you got a fucking light show now. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. It's absolutely nice. nuts. So yeah, it's it's, it's going pretty good. Um, and this Sunday actually we're gonna have another tournament, another test tournament to see uh, how solid it is. And then after that, you know, maybe we'll have some news from other stuff and where it's going. Right. Well, I will have a barbecue on Sunday and and turn on your your tournament. You can have a barbecue at nine thirty at night. I'm good with that. Yeah, that's that's usually when I eat. It. I'm actually really hungry now though, as I haven't I haven't eaten <laughs> I haven't eaten since two thirty this afternoon. It's now eleven o'clock. Oh so wow! I should eat food probably. You should do that. You should do that. And also, we're at the, at the end of the show anyway. Yeah, it's true. It pretty much is. Yeah. At some point. I'm bumping this topic from this one, but at some point we need to talk about the division. But apparently the beta is supposed to be soon, so maybe we should wait until till we after get the in. beta. Yeah, until we, we actually, see we what actually it is. know anything about this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's probably a good idea. Exactly. Cool. Well, good to have you back. Yeah, good to be back. And um, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd I'd play you a song, but I haven't figured out how to make that happen just yet. I'm a little disappointed. I feel I can hear the guitar. You should just like strum something out for us. Like play us out, man. All right. Yeah, gonna, let's do it. I'm gonna play us out. That no. <laughs> <laughs>